Lying to his audience, scamming his editors, and hilarious hypocrisy were all the ingredients needed for Dylan McKnight to completely destroy his own career with one single video. With comments such as top 5 worst apology videos of all time, his own fans have started to turn on him and Dylan has quickly found himself in a pit of controversy and on his way to becoming the number one most hated influencer. So how and why did someone who gained 50,000 subscribers last month destroy his career? in a single video. So I want to make it very clear, in this video I will not be apologizing for a mistake I made. Dylan McKnight has been on YouTube since he was a young kid. He uploaded his first video seven years ago and has been pretty consistent since. His first videos, which were uploaded in late 2016, were mainly about parkour. He showed a good understanding of connecting with his audience early into his YouTube career, doing Q&As with his fans and reacting to their clips. He always seemed to have a good relationship with his audience too, with the comments on his videos supportive of the young YouTube star. It took a couple of years of consistency, but he finally made the shift into more fitness related content, and the success he found with this marked a turning point in his career, and not necessarily for the better. His fitness content started with videos of his transformation, which was seriously impressive for just a year of training. Almost suspiciously impressive. There were murmurs in the Natty or Not subreddit that Dylan wasn't being entirely truthful about his natural transformation, with commenters claiming that if you're dumb enough to believe his transformation is the result of just hard work, you will buy sand in the desert. Nevertheless, Dylan's audience started to grow. His workout advice and motivational videos racked up millions of views each time he posted them, with his audience believing that if they followed his advice and worked hard, they would go from the once skinny kid that Dylan was to the ripped Greek god figure that Dylan had achieved. He found social media success in 2021. He moved out of his parents' home and started to pursue content creation full time. He uploaded regularly in a vlog style, as well as the same tutorials from before. He's kept this up for years, with some of the most viewed videos coming in the Connor Murphy formula of approaching girls in the street and using them for content. In the past few years, he's gained over 650,000 subscribers and millions of views each month, which according to Dylan himself, allows him to rake in over $10,000 a month just through ad revenue alone. With YouTuber being one of the most sought after jobs in the world, it's no surprise that Dylan did everything in his power to become one and maintain a consistent upload schedule, even if it came at the expense of others. Near the end of 2023, an editor reached out to me through my Twitter DMs accusing Dylan of doing some seriously shady work. Despite him earning over 10 grand a month, this editor, known as Hamza Rafiq, has accused Dylan of not paying him for work. I asked for more information and he's provided some pretty damning evidence, including leaked text messages from Dylan himself. I do want to say, take this with a pinch of salt as there's always two sides to every story, but given Dylan's recent video and his admittance to being a liar, there may be some truth in Hamza's story. According to Hamza, he and Dylan agreed on $180 for Hamza to produce a video for Dylan, who was more than happy with the work provided and agreed to pay him. However, Hamza is in Pakistan, which does not allow payments through PayPal. This usually isn't an issue for most people and they just use a different payment provider. However, this wasn't an option for Dylan, who seemed to be hesitant in setting up a Remitly account to pay for the honest work Hamza had had provided him. After a lot of back and forths and negotiations, including Dylan promising to pay the editor for his high quality work, Dylan dropped this bombshell message after Hamza threatened to share with his fellow editors that Dylan had scammed him. I am not concerned about your video threat. I've never scammed anyone in my life and the people who follow me know I'm genuine, so they wouldn't buy a word of it. Which in hindsight is pretty ironic considering his latest apology video, which we'll get into soon. Dylan then tells Hamza it's either going to be PayPal or nothing. After this, Hamza finally sent Dylan a PayPal link from a family member in another country. However, Dylan went dark. He stopped replying to the editor, ignoring any messages coming from him. To this day, Hamza still hasn't been paid and told Dylan to just donate the money he owed to a charity. Despite calling himself genuine and not a scammer, he's let an editor do work for him, posted the video with his work and refused to pay him. This is merely the first instance of Dylan being dishonest to his fans, where his downfall will truly begin. People on Reddit, in comment sections of videos and throughout social media, 
media. It was such a hot topic that even Greg Doucette made a Natty or Not video on him, garnering over 450,000 views. Greg came to the conclusion that many people weren't expecting and it went against the general consensus of the time. I don't see that this guy went from nothing to something. He went from something to something else, a bigger version of himself. You know, he set a goal and he achieved it and I hope he continues and I hope he stays natural. However, Greg was wrong. On the 23rd of December 2023, completely out of the blue, Dylan McKnight released a video titled Why I Took Steroids and Lied About It, coming clean about my natty status. And it is one of the most egotistical and embarrassing apology videos ever released. In it, he talks about how he's never asked people to look up to him and that he's not a god or a king reminding his audience that he is a mere man. I never asked any of you to look up to me. I am not your god. I am a man. I am fallible. All I ever wanted to do on here was to be relatable and to be personal, to be your friend. I never asked to be pedestalized. I never asked for any of that. He knows he lied to his audience. He even acknowledges that they'll probably feel betrayed by this video, yet he refuses to apologize. So I want to make it very clear. In this video, I will not be apologizing for a mistake I made. I'm simply owning up to that mistake and taking accountability as a man. And that is why you will not hear me say sorry today. Despite spending years of his life giving out fitness tips with the pretense that the person giving the advice and selling the supplements is natural, he doesn't think he's done anything worth apologizing about. Because the truth of the matter is, right, is this making this video right now is debatably one of the most selfless things I have ever done in my entire life. You know, the real truth of it is, is that I could continue to lie about this, keep making money from it, and none of you would ever know, just as most of your favorite fitness influencers do. Later in the video, he admits to taking Osterine early into his lifting career, which is a psalm that is commonly used, but he claims he took a very small dose, less than what women use when they take the steroid, as explained by Coach Greg. And then after that, he's saying, well, it wasn't actually steroids, it's a step down, and it was over three years ago, and it was just for over a month, and it was seven and a half milligrams, and it's a lower dose than what females take and I can attest to that most women who take Osterine take in 10 milligrams most men taking 25 and even at 25 milligrams on a full cycle perhaps you could gain four or five pounds of muscle you're not unless you're a woman going to experience mind-blowing growth from taking Osterine his fans have not took the announcement lightly with comments such as it's okay we never believed you were natural in the first place and don't worry Dylan I never looked up to you and knew you were lying in the beginning Greg Doucette's video titled Dylan McKnight is not sorry for lying to you has gone on to gain more views than the original video which shows the sentiment of how his followers are feeling towards Dylan which mirrors how Greg felt about Dylan's pathetic video. And I think that's why I got into social media in the first place. You know, to get that attention that I never got. And so you feel bad for the guy. And so you write to him and say, oh, it's okay, Dylan. We understand. I was like that too. It's okay. That is what people do when they lie. People, rather than just saying they're sorry that they made a mistake and actually owning up to it, they try to gaslight you. They try to appeal to your emotions. They do anything but take actual accountability. And so I deal and say, oh, I took a little bit of Austria, but it was over three years ago. I'm 100% natural. Is he actually apologizing for anything or is he trying to appeal to our emotions? Not only did Dylan lie to his fans, he's also a massive hypocrite. Prior to his admittance, he created a video in the past talking talking about the damage Sam Sulek is doing with promoting steroid abuse, even accusing him of having a mental illness with an addiction to steroids. Bear in mind, this video is only three months before Dylan posted his video admitting he took steroids, and some of the things he says are utterly embarrassing considering what we know now. He says that you're a beta male if you take steroids, and how he had a 100% natural transformation and more. I have a huge problem with the people who are at the face of this industry right now. Um, although I think they're extraordinarily great people, um, frankly I just don't think these people should be seen as role models. And at the forefront of these people, is Sam Solik. If you offer any kind of criticism towards him, uh, his massive fan base will just completely retaliate against you. Don't worry, I'm not here to offer any criticism. I'm just here to say that I think the way he abuses drugs, um, the destruction he's deliberately inflicting on his body is quite stupid. And frankly, I think this should be classified as a mental illness. This guy is literally probably infertile. You know, he's not going to be able to have kids. Uh, ah, but he won't have to worry about that because he's going to be dead in a couple years, right? Oh, but at least he's huge. 
Taking drugs to add more muscle to your body is like one of the most beta things you can do. Dylan hasn't had much subscriber of view counts drop off yet, but this is just the beginning. Much of his audience won't care, but the diehard fans will, and his name has been tarnished in the fitness industry for years to come. And if you want to know more about Sam Sulek outside of Dylan's call out to him, click the video that's on your screen now, and I'll see you in the next one. Done. And so highly recommend you go and follow Big Craig, 31,000 followers.